But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it patiently. Romans 8, 25. Can God take an overloaded schedule, an empty gas tank, a reluctant writer, and turn that into a devotional that helped a number of people? Hello, I'm Henry Newfeld, president of Pace Setters Bible School with today's running toward the goal. Sometimes I feel like I'm not running toward the goal, I'm walking toward the goal, crawling toward the goal, or maybe just sitting on the ground wishing that I was crawling toward the goal. I'm not a master of the five minute devotional. In order to keep these uh, Running Toward the Goal podcasts at a reasonable length, I often have to write a transcript in order to prevent myself from going off on various trails and spending all of my time qualifying or trying to make sure that somebody doesn't misunderstand some little thing that I said. I'm not even the master of the 10-minute homily or the 20-minute sermon. Um, sometimes I have a hard time with the hour-long classroom lecture. My wife, on the other hand, is quite a master of the short devotional, the short thought that really tends to hit people where it matters. This Monday morning, however, her weekend schedule had simply been too heavy to let her complete her devotional. So she told me, and very often when that happens, I write a devotional so that the members of her devotional list receive a devotional in the morning for their work week. Well, my intentions were good. Part of my morning devotional uh, practice is to read the lectionary text for the next two upcoming Sundays. That way I read them uh, somewhere between 10 and 14 times before the Sunday comes up, and I very often get devotional thoughts from them. I start with the Old Testament passage, work through the Psalms, uh, go to the Gospel and finish with the Epistle. This time I started with the Epistle, Romans chapter 8. The passage was verses 12 through 25, but I got stuck mentally on Romans 8:25. See, the Greek word that's involved there in wait for it very often includes an idea of eager expectation. So with the word patiently explicitly in the text, and the word eager kind of implied by the word that Paul uses for wait, we have one of these little tensions that we find in Scripture. Now I'm quite prepared, if that's what God is saying, to believe it. Most of the English translations don't include that idea of eagerness. And so as I worked through my morning time, I was kind of trying to decide if I was writing a, translations of, a, a translation of Romans 8.25, would I include the combination of eagerness and patience? Was that something that Paul intended to have explicitly included in that passage? I didn't get the devotional written. I had to go and drive uh, my wife to work. We work with a single car around here and on mornings when I need to have the car during the day, I'll drive her to work. We were short on gas. But I thought that we had plenty for me to get her to work on time and then go to the gas station afterward. It was not to work out that way. I got about halfway to the gas station, somewhere between a quarter and a half mile from where I needed to go, and the car ran out of gas. A good thing was I made it into a parking lot, into a parking space, just as it coughed its last. And there I was. No gas can. Wasn't really sure if the discount gas station I was heading for was the nearest, but I thought there was something nearer. And so I had to walk, buy a gas can, fill the tank uh, with gas, and walk it back to the car. Now I think that you guys can probably imagine when you're thinking about doing your day's work, you thought you were just making a short run and are heading back into the day's work, how I might respond to this. Well, mornings are my best time. 
by noon I'm starting to fade in terms of accomplishment. I schedule things in the afternoon that are more rote. I tinker with web pages. I do stuff that's easy. By the time I was walking back, I was fairly impatient. And uh, the tendency when you get fairly impatient is you start asking God why. Now, God may be asking why you think this little delay in your day is so important. I was walking back past the mall to the parking place where I had my car and there was a flower bed. As I'm walking by, I feel the urge that I should take a picture of this flower bed. I understand I'm not a constant photographer. I'm not even a very good photographer. I don't have a regular camera. I have my Palm Centro cell phone hanging at my belt that I can pull off and take a few pictures. So there's a flower bed. I keep walking, but the impression is stronger that I should stop and take a picture of the flowers in the flower bed. So I do. Not only that, but four more flower beds I take pictures of with my phone. The interesting thing was, while I had been fighting with eagerly and patiently all morning long, by the time I had taken the pictures, I was getting relaxed. I was feeling good. I was enjoying my morning walk, even with the weight of a couple of gallons of gas in a can. To make a long story short, I got back uh, to the car, got the car running, got home, and I put out the devotional. But you know, the devotional that's supposed to be in people's email boxes uh, and on the blog by the time people get to work actually got out slightly afternoon. Now here's the interesting result. When the devotional got out there, my sister was in need of encouragement because my mother was headed to the emergency room. She really loves the pictures of flowers. She hardly noticed what I wrote in the devotional, but those pictures of flowers just lifted her up and said, God takes care of me. My daughter had run out of gas the same day, and when she got to work, angry at various people, she said she saw the devotional and got all convicted. Others left comments on the blog or emailed us saying how much this particular devotional encouraged them. It may seem unusual, but God can take those little things and wrap them together. I listed five points, uh, and this is finally I'm getting to the point, and you can see I'm not making a five-minute devotional. I'm just not good at it. First is to read. I spent the time reading the scriptures in the morning believe. I was telling the Lord, look, this patiently and eagerly doesn't work for me logically, but I'm ready to believe it. Third is to trust. God is guiding. God is going to do something even though I can't comprehend what it would be. To me, running out of gas is entirely a bad thing. But to God, it may be a means to bring His grace. Finally, well, really, second to last is to obey, which is to say, no, I didn't hear a voice. No, God did not send any thunderbolts. I simply had the impression I should stop, take pictures of the flowers. And finally, testify, which I'm doing right now, which is to say, God works in the things that you might not expect. Thanks for listening. Running Toward the Goal is brought to you each weekday by Pace Setters Bible School in Pensacola, Florida. Pace Setters Bible School is an organization dedicated to improving Christian education. To find out more about our programs and events, please check our website, BiblePaceSetter.org. That's all one word, BiblePaceSetter.org. Thanks for listening, and may God richly bless you.